In civil engineering itself, a yeah. lot of people think it's only concrete and it's only... Yeah, yeah, it's not it's two of those fields, at least that we're talking about today. First, home, home inspection, right? Home inspection and, and uh, uh, RWA, photo. Photo is handover, takeover. What is home inspection and what do you guys do with it? So we bought this apartment. I want you to check the quality for A homeowner is asking for their rights, mm -hmm. right? Today, do you have the innate knowledge to check every aspect of every square foot of the building? Can we, can we check uh, internal plumbing of a building or a structure? You sign the handover, you're done. That's now true. it's your problem or yes, your, exactly. uh, your boon or your bane, right? So you're doing a very challenging job, aren't you? It is a very challenging job. But you're basically creating a lot of enemies for yourself as well when I look at it that way. Because you're checkers, right? <laughs> Nobody likes checkers. Nobody likes the teacher who checks their answer sheets, right? Quality management at the time of the project is different and post it is different. And you're basically pointing out somebody else's mistake. We also check for uh, uh, all the workmanship quality aspects, like in plumbing. Earlier, the definition of carpentry is totally different as per the Indian standard. The builders charge you for super area and whatnot area. I <laughs> coming to that. <laughs> if a consumer is educated, mm. they can have a meaningful conversation with the builder. Nobody has shown a mirror to the builders till today. Yeah. So most people don't know that such services exist. We've seen in certain other builders where they say, you know what, who are you to check? Welcome to The Code. Construction, design and engineering. This is India's number one construction podcast. Today, there are two esteemed gentlemen. Hai. They are from a company called Nemadi. Uh, one of them is a friend, in fact. His name is Uday Sima Prakash. And uh, the other gentleman is the COO of the company and his name is Mr. Suresh. I would like them to introduce uh, themselves to you. Good morning, Uday. Good morning. Good morning, Suresh. Good morning. Please. Thanks. Thanks, Rishab. Thank you for having us over. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening in. Uh, it's very nice talking to you and getting uh, it was very nice of you to have responded and get this going. No, no, We've been no, in touch for a long time. Thank you. Finally flew down from Bangalore. Uh, yeah. Nemadi, you pronounce this correctly. Nemadi is peace of mind. That's what we look at uh, giving our customers. Uh, I'll tell you a bit about myself. As you said, I uh, originally from Bangalore, born and brought up in Bangalore, studied uh, till my college, that is 12th, Bangalore, then uh, did my bachelor's in chemical engineering of everything. Oh. Then I went to the US, did my master's in mechanical engineering. Okay. Didn't like it. So <laughs> did my second master's in computer science. Okay. Got a job in Chicago as an intern. Worked for there for a bit. 2000, that's when the bubble hit. Yeah. Uh, lost that. So then flew to Europe. Mm. Was in Europe. Worked in Europe for DHL, ABN AMRO, Infosys in IT. Was in Prague and then in Amsterdam. Mm. Then came to India, joined my dad, who runs a construction project management consulting firm. Okay. So and this year is the 39th year. So mm -hmm. I came back uh, in 2009, December. Okay. Joined him in 2010, April. Right. Beginning of the financial year. Learned a bit, attended uh, IIM Bangalore. They have a fantastic program for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. called uh, Ma Management Program for Entrepreneurs and Family Businesses. Okay. So did that for a year and then worked with dad for about five years. And then we started Nemadi. And uh, that's how the journey has been. And along the way, met Mr. Suresha, who also was uh, happy to join us. Yeah. And uh, go for it, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rishabh, for hosting us. I'm Suresh. I'm the CEO of uh, Nemadi. I did my engineering way back in 1979. Okay. So uh, after my engineering, I got into industrial projects. Mm. Uh, uh, before that, I did a stint in IIT Madras. Okay. I was doing my master's, but before that, I got a very good uh, offer from Bharat Moos. Left IIT Madras and joined Bharat Moos. Went back to IIT Madras on their uh, sponsorship. Okay. Uh, and then later, I got into industrial projects. So I did uh, industrial projects for about seven years. Then latest uh, shifted over to infrastructure projects mm. where I started doing uh, canals, dams, roads, bridges, you name anything in civil engineering wow. textbook, I've done that. Sorry, I want to say something. We have this going challenge in our company. Yeah. If anybody can name a city mm. in South India okay. where he's not been not or, been worked, to, or worked, then they win a lunch. 
we have not been able to do that too nobody's able to win a lunch so far <laughs> awesome great that works and i think it's a good challenge to have as well right i know i know he's been <laughs> smallest to small places and he's been there for years so wow yeah awesome so uh, when doing uh, uh, this uh, infrastructure project yeah i happen to travel all around so i have done a lot of bridges even the bridge in front of krs dam in krishna sagar mm. with navan gardens i was a project manager stayed there for more than 4 wow. years Wow. And even I have done an underground tunnel, irrigation tunnel of one kilometer length below the hillock mm. for about uh, one year or so. So after having uh, seen all those things, then later I uh, did my MBA in marketing, then shifted over to uh, residential projects. Wow! That's when I joined uh, Mr. Uday, and his dad is my mentor, mm. Mr. Ian Prakash, and uh, enjoyed the journey with uh, all these residential. projects for a very long time so total i have about 43 years of experience in that oh, amazing about uh, 12 years in um, residential projects alone one of the one of the favorite things actually in fact talking to both of you is uh, this gives an insight to a lot of students uh aaj kya ho raha hai ki there are there are so many civil engineers uh especially doing their studies right now they like sir hum kya kare you know civil engineering mein demand nahi hai and i keep telling them construction is on a rise up uh, in fact there is a drop in the number of civil engineers available yes. to the country it's, now yes. and in fact you know uh, and talking to you and your experience it's just amazing how you can keep on building up and how you can keep on growing and there is no limit to it there's no dearth of uh, projects coming up there's no dearth of opportunities that are there and there are so many facets of civil engineering itself so it's it's i think uh, people who are listening in should be very this should be very helpful to them uh, in civil engineering itself a yeah. lot of people think it's only concrete and it's only yeah, yeah it's not steel there's a lot of different things absolutely you have project management you have program management you have a lot of time cost quality What safety not? so many things it's yeah. it's a very nuanced field and it depends on how much interest you have and you take in what you're doing yeah and one of those or two of those fields at least that we're talking about today is something that you guys do right yes uh first home home inspection right home yeah. inspection and, and uh, uh, rwa hoto hoto is handover takeover handover takeover yes. for the resident welfare associations it's yeah. usually called as apartment owners associations or okay. the society yeah and this is majorly for the residential sector that you guys do this right uh let's pick them up one by one right? sure yeah. <clears throat> let's talk about home inspection what is home inspection and what do you guys do with it so when we were part of the parent company which mm-hmm. is uh, a pro- project management consulting firm yeah. where people come to us for project management so they say okay we're going to build an a- apartment complex of 3000 apartments yeah. you please take care of time cost quality and safety after the project was over we had a lot of individual customers that's the end customer who used to come to us and say look we bought this apartment i want you to check the quality for us yeah unfortunately being a part of the association or that sorry that company we couldn't do a home inspection because it would have been a conflict yeah we can't course. check our own work i know what you mean so we got a lot of people who do this so we said okay look it makes sense for us to start a new company so we hived off and formed a new legal entity and a new company called nemadi mm. nemadi means peace of mind yeah. in in the vernacular in, in kannada and tamil and malayalam not malayalam but telugu so we said that's what we want to give our customers okay. it was a relatively new concept because essentially a homeowner is asking for their rights mm. right today what happens say rishab buys an apartment he may or may not have the time if he has the time he'd go he'd spend some time looking at what the builder has said he'd have exactly. it's 1000 square feet it's got two bedrooms it's got windows doors and then he's going to say okay looks fine but do you have the innate knowledge to check every aspect of every square foot of the building no you may not you also may say okay my bhanja bhatija somebody somebody's, somebody's got it yeah. who's going yeah, to come yeah. and check it but oh, yeah. so you don't know right what's exactly. going to happen but what we said was let us let us make this scientific let us make this based on engineering principles okay so what we did was we came up with a checklist so and then we also designed and developed an app that generates a curated checklist specific to your particular apartment okay so say you come then say i have a 2 bhk or a 2 bedroom apartment yeah then our app will give you a checklist for that so that's when we go and audit 
can you guess on average how many checkpoints we do or how many points we check in a 2000 square foot apartment mota moti guess uh, um, considering all the aspects of, of a home all yes. the aspects civil electrical plumbing safety area dampness everything yeah. Pla- paints all elements everything. stones everything. kitchen yes yes washrooms everything everything i don't know like 25 25 what 25 different a uh, checklist points no how many points to how many actual points to be check how many questions does a engineer go through maybe 25 30 no 1500 points are checked in a 2000 square foot apartment on average 1500 1500 yes. yes that is the depth of audit that we perform it takes 4 to 5 hours i didn't even know there were so many questions to an apartment <laughs> <laughs> we we start with the civil engineering aspects wow like we check the flooring mm. each and every tile is tapped and checked for dampness hollowness. and the grouting hollowness uh, sorry the hollowness yeah yeah any hollow sound no the bottom the Absolutely, uh, yeah. there is any debonding yeah so that is checked and then we check for the grouting whether the grouting has been done properly mm. and is there any lippage lippage is the difference between two adjacent tiles yeah i know what you mean so that should not exceed more than 0.5 mm so we check that and any cracks scratches small chip offs that's for the flooring mm. and many times you don't uh, believe that uh, they are not even bonded like when you walk on them it makes a tick tock sound yeah, yeah yeah i know what you mean yes so uh, that kind of things are also uh, discovered mm. then we go and check the walls yeah for uh, uniformity in painting very small cracks and any dampness we use infrared imaging uh, uh, equipment oh yeah to uh, check the dampness dampness in the walls yes, yes dampness in the walls wow. so you can't what you can't see in the eye the ir images will catch up okay and also we use moisture meters to confirm the dampness mm. and then check for any cracks major minor and even the same thing to the ceiling okay and then we move on to the can we uh, can we check uh, internal plumbing of a building or a structure when you say internal plumbing you as mean, in like the pipes which are going there if there is yeah, any yeah. crack in it or so if there is any leak so leakage in that there are certain tools which you can use to see where the pipes are embedded ah okay but what we do is we come at a point where the home owner or the home buyer is in the last tranche of his payment yeah i know what you mean right mm. so we can only help them to get what they were promised mm. but because they still have the last tranche of payment that needs to be made yeah they can say i'll take this technical report please remember this report that we give the home owner is a technical report it's visual it's got a photograph it's got an annotation it's got a description of the problem and yeah. a potential solution so when they give this to the builder they can get these things done they can get it rectified in the exactly way. because it is still in the ambit of the builder right of course right and you to answer your question whether we can see where it's embedded or not we can tell you where it is embedded but to check if it is actually leaking then a pressure test needs to be done so there are different which, methods different be. methods to be done mm. so this is where the infrared camera helps interesting so what we tell them is look you are taking over an apartment please tell the builder to charge the pipes mm. generally what happens is the builder will say okay you are coming today i'm going to open the pipes today yeah yeah, yeah. so the pipes are going to get charged but it will not have enough time for any leaks to manifest yeah, exactly and even if it is there it won't show immediately so, right so yeah so there are say, different barriers to it exactly so mm. you say please wait for two days mm. let it be charged and then we'll come yeah usually what we do is like especially when when we give a house to a contractor or a builder and uh, they do the job let's say it takes a year and a half or something for a villa to complete and i'm talking about a villa here we were talking about apartments before uh usually what happens is we save the last 10% of the payment mm. for the exactly n- for a year or the next rainy season whichever is earlier mm-hmm. usually that's what happens at least in areas like delhi that's what the uh, running norm is and Uh, a single rainy season doesn't show any sort of a depletion in your building correct kisi tarike ka koi badlav dikhta nahi hai pehle ek rainy season mein uh it's a it's a measure but i don't think it's a full proof measure in any case right but at least it's a step towards getting there's there's some sort of yeah. a, at least some sort of a risk mitigation reassurance yeah. to you that okay there's a year of hand holding uh, there are some good builders who give you a two year three year five year of a hand holding as well uh they'll give you a warranty of like a year or two and then they'll give you a hand holding for 5 years which is like okay if you need plumbing service if you need any stone to be rectified any joints to be healed they they basically help you out there 
but that is a point of service from a good developer or a good builder that's correct uh, but usually when it talk when you talk about apartments and you know a uh, a uh, uh, something which is a cluster of villas which is being handed over once you're handed you've resigned the handover you're done that's true. now it's your problem or yes, your exactly. uh, your boon or your bane right so nobody else has anything to do with it now for it not to become a bane yeah is when we say look it's better to be penny wise and pound foolish yeah see take the service or get somebody to check something properly mm. so that you find these problems before you move in yeah let's assume you've bought an apartment and then you move in mm-hmm. okay your parents move in with you your wife and kid moves in with you tomorrow there is a leakage in your b- bedroom bathroom yeah okay the wall because that's generally a common wall whatever leaks comes up in that wall now imagine the problem you'll have to face you'll have to find a contractor who's willing to do that small job mm you will have to find the time to take a break to do that you will have to get people out and you will have to let workers come into your sanctum sanctorum yeah. your private space all this could be avoided if this was found before you before moved in end. yeah i know what you mean so yeah. it is not a question of saving a few rupees it's a question of saving your total peace of mind mm. but you're doing a very challenging job aren't you it is a very challenging job matlab you you basically creating a lot of enemies for yourself as well when i look at it that way because you're checkers right <laughs> nobody likes checkers nobody likes the teacher who checks their answer sheets right uh in a way that's what you're doing uh quality management at the time of the project is different and post it is different and you're basically pointing out somebody else's mistake uh mistake or let's say shortcoming right uh but before we get to that what is the scope of the home inspection uh-huh. what are all the points at least some of them if you can list them you said there are 1500 questions yes so there must be a lot of aspects where you check right so please yeah. can you uh, guide us like i just started earlier we check the civilizing aspects first yes so that starts with the flooring yeah. i mentioned many of the things what we do with the flooring mm-hmm. then the walls then the ceiling yeah then the bathroom slopes see slope is a very uh, critical thing like the the water should drain out in a particular time so there are some standards mentioned in national building code mm. which we rigorously follow and then point out mm-hmm. and the slopes are different for bathroom and different for balconies and terraces okay so there are different uh, slopes it makes sense mentioned. because if you st- yeah. you don't want to stand in your own dirty water when you're showering so, and yeah. yeah yeah right yeah. it just stops somewhere else it's supposed to go somewhere yeah, else yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's a very basic thing but basic. people make mistakes yeah. and also it's a safety issue where people will slip yes mm-hmm. if the water is uh, stopped there yeah. and then we also check for uh, uh, all the workmanship quality aspects like in plumbing mm-hmm. we check for all the sanitary fixtures and fittings whether there is any damage whether there is any improper fixing and whether there is any leakage in the health faucet the shower the taps the bottom piping we check all that mm-hmm. and then we check for the electrical uh, points so we check each and every uh, point for power supply so like the ceiling there will be only some two wires dangling when a new apartment or a villa when they go there is no light fixtures that are fitted yeah so at that point you have to go there to use a test lamp or uh, the multimeter and then check for the, uh, the there is there is power supply uh, you will not believe that even in one of the top builders when you are checked there are more uh, points without power supply even wow so just imagine after he walks in then the they fit some electrical fixtures that time they have to open out everything and then rewire the whole thing yeah so you want to talk about some over voltages we've had and switch between line and neutral and yes yes so the next yeah, the main uh, thing what we notice is the earthing fault mm. so the many power sockets uh, will not have proper earthing done so uh, needless to say what happens if that thing is not okay absolutely working? and then uh, this line and neutral many people are not aware mm-hmm. the line and neutral th- there is a polarity for alternating current also yeah so uh, that is because the switch has to be in line so many times it is reversed mm. so we use a electrical fault detector to detect in every power socket whether the uh, the line and neutrals are reversed on the switch okay and if that is not uh, then there will be electricity passing till the switch which will give a shock okay and many of these uh, uh, latest equipment the thing is not okay and uh, due to leakage there should be no uh, power supply in the neutral even neutral should be almost absolute zero i know what you mean you know, many times we find that it has some 
5 voltage or 10 volts. Yeah, yeah. That means some leakage current is passing. All that we check. Mm. And no, essentially, yeah. we are looking at civil, mm. electrical, plumbing, safety, area. The area. He's going to explain the area, the carpet area. Oh yeah. And dampness. You're paying for the carpet area. Yes, yes exactly. Mm. So you have to measure that. So sorry, I cut you off. So uh, regarding carpet area, this is one of the very crucial uh, thing that we have been doing. See, the earlier the definition of carpet area is totally different as per uh, Indian standard. So they used to give a uh, area within the room, and uh, like I always keep telling, only where you can put carpet. carpets. Mm. So that was called as carpet area, and we also call it as layable area. Yeah. With the advent of uh, RERA, which was uh, made effective in October 2017. Mm -hmm. So the definition of carpet area is totally different now. Okay. So carpet area includes the internal footprint of the, uh, sorry, the uh, footprint of the internal walls. Okay. Whereas the external wall is excluded. Internal walls uh, are considered as part of carpet area. Whereas the exclusive balcony for your own bedroom, that is not taken as a part of carpet area. If really? it's not covered, yes. If it's not covered, it doesn't take. When you say covered, it doesn't have a roof over it. Yes. It's yes, not an yes, inclusion yes, into your yes, room, right? Yes, yes. yes. So anything which is an external yes, part yes. of Balconies your... Balconies are out of scope, veranda is out of scope. scope. They're not measured in your carpet area? No. I, I didn't know that. No. As per Arrera, this is the... As per Arrera, it is not. Even your uh, shafts are not, not wow. covered. But builders charge you for super area and whatnot area. I was coming to that. <laughs> so there are a lot of uh, areas being uh, spoken about and used like starting with plinth area, built up yeah. area. Then uh, Leoville area, then uh, then there's the super built up super area. built up area. That is a very complex term. You know, nobody understands, mm. and there is no standard definition of super built up area. Yeah. It's the principle is you have your uh, carpet area. Then there are some common area. That common area is divided or apportioned to each uh, apartment or villa. Okay. Uh, pro rata as per your uh, uh, share. It's supposed to be pro rata. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's UDS yes. undivided share. Yes. Wow. Yeah, obviously because if I you didn't have... know this, uh, sir. I'm sorry. People charge you per square feet, and they tell you the total area is this, and this is the per square feet cost. This is what it'll cost you, and then you're like, okay, this is carpet area, this is super area, this is, and like, this is what it is. If you want to buy it, you buy it. Otherwise, you go. See, that's where if if a consumer is educated, mm. they can have a meaningful conversation with the builder. Okay. Also, we've been saying this. It may come out differently, but. Nobody has shown a mirror to the builders till today. Yeah. Nobody has had the guts to say, you know, we are paying it. It's our hard-earned money. In exactly. India, mostly people buy one house in their lifetime. Very few people have the capacity to buy a second or a third. Yeah. So if you're spending lakhs of rupees, crores of rupees to buy a house, you need to get what you're actually promised. I mean, yeah. when you buy, what shall I say, fruits, you look at the quality. Yeah. It's a few tens and hundred rupees. If you're buying crores, you have to check for the quality. Yeah. Why are we not doing it? And when you're actually out there buying something, the way it's marketed to you, it's marketed to you in a way where it says, this is your dream home, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is the aspiration, right? Exactly. I'm in that phase of my life right now mm -hmm. where I, I want to build something of my own or I want to buy something of my own eventually. And I'll be like, okay, this is a home I have made. Mm -hmm. And I think वो होता है ना कि वो रोटी कपड़ा मकान जो है ना वो मकान एक ऐसी आशा होती है हमारे अंदर एक ऐसा होप होता है कि this is what I give back to my children exactly. or the next generation to come this is what I've built or this is what I've bought or this is what I've achieved in my life so home is that part of achievement and aspiration that is how that marketing is done you know to exactly. pitch to our emotions as well yeah. but the deliverance is not exactly the same that is why Excuse me. That's why you need to get what you were promised. Yeah. No, but who will help you get that? Interesting. So you need somebody who has the technical knowledge, mm. who can speak the same language as a builder. Yeah. And it should be based on technical thing. It should not be subjective in nature. So most people don't know that such services exist. Yes. Ab sam jona. Like yeah. actually, one of the biggest challenges is that there's no know-how. There's a lot of lack of awareness also. Like people yes. don't, people want to get it checked, but they don't know where to go and how to reach out. But also, that's the one of the things that we are trying to face. Now, I spoke to you yeah. and we got about this, but how do we educate somebody what to search for? Mm. Now, what do they search for? Quality in-house, you will get quality standards. Yeah. Unless they understand the word home inspection. 
right? Mm. You need to search for home inspection. And then, so you need to spread the concept of home inspection. Right. So that's what we're trying yeah. to do. I'd like to add, uh, we have a more section. It's called specification check. The vendor would have promised so many things like... There's a BOQ that they give you, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The list of the promises, like yeah. you have a... a, 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 a I a Tiles in the bathroom, and anti skip the tiles in the bathroom, yeah. wooden flooring in the bedroom. A certain brand of steel, a certain quality of cement, a certain quality, whatever it is. Steel and cement, they you can't, can't, you can't them. check in any case. Right. What we check, uh, we're making clear that it's workmanship quality. Oh, nice. So, what we uh, do is we check for the brand or the main, uh, make, like Grohe fittings and Jaguar fittings, they would have promised so many things. High end, low end, we gave them all. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So, we check all that, the type of uh, door locks. Hardware, sometimes they even say, video you do phone? Mm -hmm. So all the promises, we make a list of that. And as Buddha was telling, that becomes a part of a curated checklist. Right. So when our engineers will check, they check for even all the specifications and then the report, which says that the builder has uh, followed what he has promised mm -hmm. or not. So mm -hmm. that's also problem. What is interesting is if you see, they say, this or equivalent. Yeah, yeah equivalent. So now what is the definition of equivalent? There is none. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's very it's subjective. <laughs> the moment you say equivalent, there's no specific. The entire brand and their yeah. whole thing goes out for exactly. a toss, uh, and they don't actually mention the technical specification of the product. In any case, yes. the, uh, it's easier to mention a brand and say, okay, this and equivalent Jaguar and, and uh, yes. equivalent whatever. Exactly and, uh, what they were studying. Yeah, they didn't come from a conceptual background. Yeah, so we know how the buildings are built from right from foundation to finish. Absolutely. So we know where things can be. Short changed. Makes sense. So with that knowledge, we know where to check, how to check, and then give a proper report that makes some meaning. Yeah. You mentioned something about national building codes and following the code and specifications from the BIS, and then basically checking uh, the different elements. Uh, you have a huge checklist of things to do, right? Uh, the rules and regulations that I mentioned in the national building code, do you strictly follow them? You mentioned something like that. Yes. Um, so then uh, there is a a huge knowledge pool that you require yourself and within your team as well for those codes and how they are followed to the T. So you want to talk about a little bit about your process? Lovely, lovely. I like this. Yeah. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, compiled a lot of uh, uh, knowledge pool. Yeah. So we started with the National Billion Code. National Billion Code is the Bible mm -hmm. for building construction in India. Yeah. It contains specifications for all the workmanship. Okay? And there are certain things which are uh, further in depth decided by certain uh, industrial, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, Indian standards. Yeah. There are particular say, doors, locks, the in depth specifications also spelled out. Yeah. And then beyond that, we also follow uh, the best industry practice. So, generally, what they normally do. And uh, apart from that, there are certain things which we borrow from different standards. For example, yeah, yeah. Singapore. Singapore has drawn beautiful standards for on the apartment construction. So they have a standard for even vertical check checking, which is not the Indian standards. So like, for example, when they say there is a crack on the wall, they say that it should be observed from a distance of 1.5 meters. If it is visible, then it is a snag. Oh, wow. No need to be very near to it and then check. What is a snag? A snag is a cloak, not a colloquial, but a technical term for a problem. I know what you mean, yeah. yeah so, for the viewers, of course, yes. so we just want to clarify that. Yeah. So, like that, uh, we follow Singapore uh, standard building uh, uh, authority, Compass. building construction authority. Mm -hmm. There was a waiting system also, it's called Compass mm -hmm. in Singapore. That's very well defined. So, something which is not existing in our Indian standards, then we can always go for these standards. They rate the apartments mm -hmm. there in Singapore. Yeah. Here is now. Even in construction, like when there's something not available in the IS codes, then they use the European codes or they use the American code and they basically go with it. Uh, if it's acceptable elsewhere and the conditions are met. We, uh, we also use like, uh, just to give an example, like yeah. uh, hollowness in tiles. Mm -hmm. So the little pointing so it gives that uh, dummy sound. Exactly. So uh, we had a very uh, tough time in deciding what is allowable or not. But IS is totally silent on that. That means... It, there's a zero hollowness is allowed. Tolerance mm. of hollowness is zero. zero. There should be no zero. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, I wrote to them. There was no response. Mm -hmm. So then we did a lot of uh, research. So then we found that only the Australian standard mentions 20% of the hollowness is permissible. Okay. In a particular tile, not the 20% uh, mm. of the room area. Yeah. Only one particular tile. Yeah. 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 The 20% is permissible. Yeah. So we started following that because. Mm -hmm. Practically, it's not possible to achieve that. Of course. And also, we uh, both uh, train our engineers 
and specifically they have to check in which part of the room this hollow tile is there. If a dining table like this sitting on that, it is dangerous, it will break. And point if it's white. There's a point load, right? Point. Because of the point load, it will crack. Yeah. But if it's in the corner, it doesn't matter. I don't know what you mean, yeah. So we use all those things and then we have, uh, from our beginning, from when we started doing the nine years back, so we started with the basic checklist, then we kept on adding. So we have an continuous training session. So like every time an inspector goes, an engineer goes and checks something, some needs nice if I thought that immediately he gets updated to our checklist. So every uh, fortnight we have a team meeting where all the UV and the points are discussed and then we also uh, uh, bring, uh, brainstorm like how do we, because there is a, certain things are subjective. So we arrive at a particular consensus and then the time goes on inspecting the same way. Okay. So uh, there are many versions. So right now it's a totally a distilled version of what's of experience over nine years. So, so essentially to answer your question, the way that our engineers are brought to the level is continuous training. Yeah. Continuous updated training. Exactly. So we look at any civil engineer okay. who's got some qualification in civil engineering mm -hmm. could also be a mechanical engineer but has had civil engineering training on site i know what you mean yeah they need to be at site if they're not at site it's difficult for us to explain what it means mm -hmm. to them and they can't comprehend it because yeah. they've not been taught it yeah secondly we need to be able to talk in a manner that the cons the consumer our client also feels that we are able to communicate meaningfully to them yeah an example that we always give our engineers is for any white guy or girl who comes from abroad, how do you explain to them what a rasgulla is without letting them taste what a rasgulla is? Yeah. Whatever you say, you will not be able to do justice. Yeah, exactly. Unless they see it and similarly, unless they our experience engineers yeah. see is good quality, yeah. experiences what poor quality is, they don't. That's why we have a knowledge base, we call that a compendium, okay. where continuously information keeps getting added and that is what is shared and that's what they learn. Yeah, and, and, and you have that huge pool of knowledge built under you with that experience of the uh, PMC company as well, right? So there's that's like correct. a lot of data which is already existing with you guys. That's correct. Uh, yeah, built in part of uh, standard operating procedures, right, right. so to make sure that nothing goes wrong during and engineer goes to site and he captures the particular inspection, right. captures certain snacks. They are not directly put into the report. Mm -hmm. They pass through the next level of review. Yeah. Yeah. Each and every snack is captured by the uh, first level engineer. He is reviewed by a senior level engineer having more than 20 years of experience. Right. Right. Sitting at the back office, they go through everything. They check for the veracity of snack, the validation. Then only it's passed out as a snack. And one more thing that I, I didn't tell you. Whenever any snack is captured, we rate them as on the priority. So the, uh, the reviewer, not the uh, engineer who captures, he just passes it on. Then the reviewer then checks the type of snack and gives a priority. Like priority, 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 as though we are the homeowner of the project. Right. So we will not say, no, this is okay. No, we will, mm. as though we were doing it. You're we, giving him the options. You're saying, okay, this is non-acceptable. This you can still live with, right? Yeah. Or this is something that needs repair. You need to talk to the developer, right? Yes. So you're basically giving a comprehensive report yes. to the homeowner. And then basically that person needs to sit down with the developer and make their decision and talk to them about the certain problems that they are facing. Okay, this is priority one, this is priority two, this Absolutely. is priority three. Absolutely. So based on that. We were talking data points. Yeah. I'd asked you a number of prop yeah. points that we checked. Yeah, exactly. Can you guess on average mm. the number of snags or problems that we find in a 2,000 square foot apartment. We've done about 10,000 homeowners till now. Okay. So we've averaged that out. Can you guess? What is the um, average number of snags in a 2,000 square feet, feet apartment? Yes. Now I want to answer this a little higher because you said, <laughs> <laughs> you said there were 1,500 questions. Yes. Oof. So I'm assuming a 10% failure rate. So 150 issues. Yeah. Pretty close. 168. See? <laughs> Smart answer that one. <laughs> yeah. Works. So so 
so imagine right so you've got 150 problems or 168 problems in a 2000 square foot apartment. apartment now let's put some money to that mm. okay if we were to say mota moti that you've now moved in and you want to get this 168 problems repaired yeah can we say on average that you'll have to pay at least 1,000 rupees per problem? Yeah, that's that's a bare minimum cost for anything. Yeah? So that's 1.68 lakhs? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, let now imagine us... doing that later once you bought the apartment. Exactly. So now we talk about dampness. Mm. How many apartments do you think have dampness in them as a percentage? If it's a, if it's a stacked housing, if one has them, the other ones have them. So it just trickles down, right? So it's all there. Uh, let's say 20 percent 30 percent 30 percent yeah 30 percent yeah, getting very good mm. <laughs> 30 percent of them have dampness yeah now you have to get this dampness repaired means if the, if there is rising dampness you'll have to remove the tiles you'll have to redo the waterproofing exactly. all of that. let us say another 50 thousand bucks yeah 1.68 plus 50 now let's come to area and then if you have electrical wires running through in that area, in that patch. It becomes worse. It's a much more riskier situation as well. And then exactly. that's a uh, priority level one or like high priority. High priority, right. exactly. Yeah. Now you come to area. Mm. You are, as you said earlier, each person buys the property based on the area. We yeah. are paying on per square foot. Absolutely. Let us assume 10,000 rupees a square foot in Bombay. Mm. Okay. In a 2,000 square foot apartment, if you have even 10% less. Yeah, I know what you mean. So now you're paying uh, 10,000 rupees a square foot. 10% less is 20. 20. 20 is 2 lakhs. Yeah. So unless and until you have a contract that says I allow plus or minus 5% or plus or minus 2% depending on the builder. Yeah. Otherwise, you're actually paying through your nose. Absolutely. So now if you don't take an inspection, you can stand to lose how much? Almost 3 to 4 lakhs. Mm. But then again, when you talk Mota about carpet Mota. area... Or you talk about the area checking of the apartment and you've paid something by per square feet, let's say. You've agreed to pay a price at the very onset, right? Uh, for a villa or for an apartment that they're selling to me, let's say as a homeowner, I've already agreed that, okay, I'm going to pay 2 crore rupees for this house. Mm -hmm. More or less, right? Uh, so my price is fixed and mm -hmm. I've made interim payments also. Mm -hmm. uh, level 1, level 2, level 3, whatever. I've made my payments and those tranches have gone through. And then maybe the last 10% or last 15% is remaining. So in any case, I don't think that the builder will basically revise something to he that He may report. not revise it, but at least that gives you information, data, to know that your 2,000 square foot apartment is no longer 2,000 square feet. It's 1,890 it's or 1,850 or whatever it is. It's 1,950. Yeah. Think, yeah. If it's 1,950, you need to at least know that 50 into 10,000 uh, 10, is 5 lakhs. You're short 5 lakhs. So you can talk to, you have a yeah. meaningful education. At least you have a negotiating policy. tool then depends on you how you want to use it yeah you can use it as negotiation you can use it as a bargaining chip you can use it for something else yeah we've had people who've come to us and say oh thank you for this we've been able to talk to them and they've given us wooden flooring in another bedroom that's great or they've said no they've given us a mom uh, what is a granite counter in the so it depends on how each homeowner i mean there might be that 10 percent chance that the builder actually didn't know you know that is true because drawing is something and then actual is something exactly. and it, yes. they don't match sometimes, mm -hmm. especially during their civil work. Yes. I know this for a fact that the drawings get changed on the go mm -hmm. while the construction is happening as well. Site instructions, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were talking to this, ex this expert who does cut and bend mm -hmm. of uh, TMT. Mm -hmm. uh, he says there is never a chance that I have something that I can work just from the drawings. So eventually we have to visit the site, we have to measure it and we have to check. And that is what we have to fabricate in the factories as well. Exactly. And then we basically install the steel based on the fact, uh, based on the site, not the drawing. And this happens with every product. You talk about any modular system that's there, site is different than the drawing. Most definitely. So it does change like, okay, maybe not 10%, but maybe two, three, four, five percent change is very normal. Uh, if the in fact i think the builders should also get it checked what if they're giving more floor space than they promised <laughs> that's true that's why that's where the contracts are there yeah. right? that's where they say plus or minus two plus or minus two percent yes right so, so there's we don't that. have a variation in in payment unless it's plus or minus two percent yeah not about every builder uh, some builders are buying enough to uh, of course to use the contract just, and uh, 
some, some people don't miss bitch in HR. Uh, you become wise with experience, right? So, <laughs> uh, now that we know who your client is, uh -huh. who should come to you? No, we have not actually talked about who our customer is. Let's actually right? do that. Who, who? Uh, I, homeowner is one guy. Well, let's not say customer. We'll say anybody who needs to take a home inspection. Okay. Okay. Any person who's a home buyer, mm -hmm. either in the primary market or the secondary market, it is wise for them to get what they're buying checked. Yeah. And for the uh, sake of def defining what primary and secondary means here, is primary is a new build yes. and secondary is something which is resold. That is uh, Pre-existing, pre pre-owned house, pre right? Yeah. Right. Please, sorry. So you have somebody who buys that. That will give you an idea of, at least you know what the state of your product is. Mm -hmm. What you do with it, how much impetus you have to do with that, how much gut somebody has to do with it is a different question. Okay. But you at least know the quality of the product you are taking over. Yeah. Yes, it is in the last 10% of the payment, but now you know. Otherwise, tomorrow you're going in blind. You don't even know what you are getting. Yeah. Right? And so, having faith and being blind is different. <laughs> Yes. They're, they're just two different things. That's why we Sometimes it just coincides and then you're hurt later, right? That's why we say trust but yeah. verify. But verify. Absolutely. Yes. That makes sense. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. That's interesting. Well said. You wanted to add something to it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the secondary market, yeah. Uh, what we're talking about. Secondary market. Many times people say, why, why do we require this? Mm -hmm. So that serves them in two purpose. One is, you know what you are getting into. Yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow you'll have to uh, stay there. What are things? Minimum you'll have to get repaired. Rectified, so that will have a fair idea. Then, this report will also help you to negotiate the price. Okay, okay. Because whoever sells will always say, My, my property is 24 carat. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so, this report you can tell them is 18 or 22 carat. Mm. Hopefully, not 16 carat gold later on. <laughs> that happens, right? Uh, okay, fine. So, we've understood who should come to you, uh, who should, in fact, be employing such services. Service to ek part is it. What does it cost? Bhao kitna hai, deta kitna hai. Wo bahut zaruri India mein. So we start, we, what we did was a lot of people said, why don't you charge per square foot? Okay. We said, look, doesn't matter square foot. For us, we will charge you on the quantum of work we perform. Okay. A, because if it's a 1 BHK or a 2 BHK or a 3 BHK, the quantum of work will differ. Even if it's, what shall I say? 500 square foot, 1000 square foot. So we said we will charge you on slabs. 0 to 1000 square feet, 1001 to 2000 square feet, 2001 to 3000 square feet that way. Mm -hmm. So our prices for a basic home inspection starts at around 10,000 rupees. Okay. Including, including TST, including TST. Including TST. Including TST. Including TST. So, bye, so, bye. That's, a, yeah. that's not bad at all. Yes. I was holding my breath. I was thinking this is going to cost me a lot. You are doing a checklist of 1500 questions Yes. for a 2000 square feet apartment. Yes. And you, so that's fine. I mean, so when we go to a 2000 square feet thing, sort of a thing, maybe we, it rises to a 14,000 14, rupees, right? So I don't think it's a big money to pay, that's right? Not. Because you end up saving so much more. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I mean, that's easy. Yeah. And but if it goes to a villa, yeah. it's slightly more expensive. Of course. We've, and when it goes to super luxury villas, like really big ones, we've gone up to about four to five lakhs. Yeah, because the, 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 the products in them are different. The, the, but you have to yeah. check the exteriors. You know, check, check the swimming and pool. A jacuzzi. small loss is a big loss there in any case. Everything is high value, high ticket size, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I completely understand that. Um, I wanted to talk to you when, you're, when we're talking about quality, right? <clears throat> There are some of the aspects in a house that are shown much later. They show their effects much later, like three, four, five years down the line. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep circling back to this no because worries. because I have this genuine query where, where I want to understand for a new house, everything seems hunky-dory, right? That's probably also why people don't understand that they need such services. But the problem arises three, four seasons later, five seasons later, right? Uh, is there a way to tell that a house will develop termites later? Is there a way to tell that, okay, there will be a seepage in this house? And can you actually be sure shot on it? That, okay, this plumbing is not proper. This electric work, there's a there's a shortcoming in it. Can we be, can we actually predict it way ahead of, ahead of time and say, okay, you know, this is going to create a problem for you later, three, four, five years down the line. Is there tech available in, in the country today that can help with home inspection like that? Or it's not a thing? 
Talking about prediction, prediction is uh, not uh, exact science in this particular thing. Yeah. yeah. So what all we checked in the workmanship quality, they actually prevent things going bad. Say for example, you have to talk about the flooring. So we uh, thoroughly checked the grouting. Grouting is the space between yeah. two tiers what is yeah. filled up. Mm. There are different types of grouting possible. One is using cementitious material, some use the epoxy uh, uh, resins. Yeah. So there are many times, you know, they, uh, we have seen in uh, uh, bathrooms, they go for the cementitious uh, grout. Yeah. So when you use cementitious grouting, the problem is, as uh, you keep on cleaning the thing with acidic materials, the cement gets deteriorated and it opens up, further leading to the dampness and the wall gets spoiled. Yeah, yeah. So there we always suggest go for uh, epoxy uh, grout for torrents, even up to dados. Yeah, yeah. That is the vertical uh, tire what to do in the walls. So for that also they should, wherever the water falls and whether it is subject to painting frequently, they should go for epoxy. So these things, they prevent things going by after some time. Mm -hmm. But also these cracks. Cracks are uh, inevitable uh, because of uh, the basic cement what they use. Yeah. Yeah. It, it shrinks after some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little yeah. bit of uh, cracks will be there. Yeah. There are cracks which requires uh, attention in the beginning. See, in a new uh, uh, building, if there is any crazy cracks, crazy cracks in like maps, yeah. you find a thin lake, which has all unrest, but that has been filled up with proper primer, putty and all that, so that the water doesn't get into yeah. the uh, walls. Yeah. The moment water gets into the wall, one is it will deteriorate the uh, rock wall, but also in case if there is an RCC behind. Mm. So that's one uh, one thing very uh, particular what we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, whenever you have an RCC beam, like in basements and all that, you find a lot of water uh, leakage. So people are more worried that the water drops and the cars part below and they get spoiled. But the main problem is when the water enters the RCC, that's the reinforced cement concrete, there is a steel bar inside and the steel bar gets corroded. The moment the steel bar corrodes, it produces ferrous oxide. Okay. Ferrous oxide is higher in volume than the basic iron. So when a higher volume product gets converted, it will put pressure on the concrete and concrete gets pushed out. I know what you mean. If you see the, the old buildings, they are not there exposed, that's called mm -hmm. spalling. Yeah. Yeah. moment spalling sets in, it sets a vicious circle of further corrosion, further spalling. Yeah. Yeah. And the correction to that is not easy. It's not easy yeah. at all. No. It will bring down the life of the building yes. exponentially after certain yes. period. Yes. See, the, all these things happen after about 15 or 20 years, yeah. Yeah. not before that. So if you take care of all this dampness right in the beginning, it will not deteriorate the uh, life of the building. I have a very big beef with our Indian mindset. And I'll tell you what beef that is. So we like to maintain our cars. Hmm. Her, her 10,000, her 5,000, we get it serviced, right? Yes. Any electronics that we buy, we buy them with, let's say, Apple products, Apple Care. Hmm. Whatever, Samsung products, we, we buy Samsung Care. So we buy that service for it beforehand. Hmm. We buy a car from a company which is offering us 5 years, 10 years of warranty. We mm. buy a watch which has a lifetime warranty on it. Mm. But when it comes to a house and it actually doing the remedy for it, we will probably do Vastu corrections. Mm. We will probably paint and repaint because Vastu says so. But mm. we actually don't maintain the servicing of our house in any case. Correct. So the life of our house goes down like anything. And then we end up blaming our quality of construction also. But I think as a homeowner also, we need to have those services in place that we can maintain our house in a proper way. Water exiting the terraces, mm -hmm. the balconies, mm -hmm. is such a basic thing, right? Correct. Uh, there's this civil engineer, a friend of mine, and I, I, I would like to call him a friend. He's a 65-year-old, 70-year-old man, and he's been practicing for 45 years. He says, Rishabh, there is one problem to go to the sea. There is one reason. Our old people used to say, go to the sea, go to the sea, go to the sea, and take a broom with you, and just... Clear out all the, you know, exit lines to the water. That's all. Naliya saaf karo. Bas. Bas basic cheez hai hai. But we don't even take care of that now. We blame it on the fact that we are busy. We don't want to do these menial jobs. That's why we hire people uh, who come in into our homes and sanitize our homes and clean our houses and everything. The, uh, the patthar and the polish should be better. Everything else we don't care about. So maintenance of a house is something that's still not being talked about. But at least we are talking about inspection now. Inspection is a huge thing. Uh, and I keep on realizing the, this now and then. But 
the kind of fees that you guys are charging, I don't think it's much at all. In fact, the cost of house versus the kind of fees that exactly. companies like exactly. Nambi are charging is not very high. So this is a very basic thing that should become a part of every routine house, right? Uh, we've spoken about pretty much who should you, your customer be, your process. We've spoken about the BIS codes that you follow. Uh, now I want to talk about the industry as such. Uh, you guys have worked for more than like you've provided services more than 10,000 houses by now. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the Indian demographics. Mm -hmm. uh, Northern India homes versus Western India homes or maybe Southern Indian homes. Uh, quality of construction. Maybe you want to throw some, sure. some. And of course, I want to talk about the approaches towards construction <laughs> later about it. Please go for it. So. We're from Bangalore, so yeah. we have a lot more information on Bangalore, yeah. but we also being part of the project management consulting firm, we've done projects all over India. So yeah. there is a little more in-depth information, knowledge of how these projects work in different places. Mm -hmm. We know that Bangalore adoption of newer material, newer technology is much faster and much higher. Yeah. Say compared to Chennai. Chennai is a slightly more orthodox place where they follow technology a little later, maybe a lag of a couple of years, five, 10 years, the lag is there. Bangalore started using hollow concrete blocks long back. My dad's house, 1984, they already had used hollow concrete blocks. Wow. But now we had Chennai use that a little later, right? Also, you have people who are open to suggestion, open to correction, a lot more in Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, compared to other places where we've worked. Okay. Where builders are, you know what? We are quite confident in the quality of construction that we're doing. That we're doing. You please come. We are happy for you to do a third party check. Yeah. That is a home inspection. We have no problem. We've seen in certain other builders where they say, you know what, who are you to check? Mm. So the way that we talk to them is, or we educate our customer is, <clears throat> Ask them, what are they trying to hide? Yeah. Are they trying to hide something? What are they scared about? If you are confident in your quality of construction, in your deliverable, there is nothing to hide. Hmm. That is what is lacking, no? <laughs> the confidence is not there. But why should there be no confidence? I mean, you've taken... It's very simple. Reason. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Every L1 gets the job. Mm -hmm. Civil uh -huh. contractor is the L1 guy. Plumbing contractor is the L1 guy. Electrical guy is the L1 guy. Hmm. Uh, stone layer is the L1 guy. P.O.P. Putti wala guy is the L1 guy. Painter is the L1 guy. Hmm. I don't care about what job they've done for me in the past. If there's a problem, I'll hold their payment. Hmm. That's all I can do. And as a developer, my problem is just finding those right L1 people. It should be an L1 T1 technology. Also, and responsibility. How much you are taking responsibility for what you're doing. Mm. I think if that comes into the picture, then it doesn't become that it has to be necessarily L1. Yeah. So if it is L2, but T1, yeah. right? In terms of they're able to deliver in a much better technology, then you should go. Because then at the end of the day, your consumer is more satisfied. You'll be able to do a better project next time. Yeah. And you get more returns as a builder. Absolutely. So uh, many types of agencies are employed in, a, in, a, in building a project, right? Um, quality is a big concern. Mm -hmm. Always. We talk about it, but we don't actually know what it is. Half of us don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe more. Uh, I spoke to a civil contractor once. I'm like, sir, why are your prices so high? Mm -hmm. um, a standard rule is given per square feet. Okay, I'm going to charge you 1,000 rupees per square feet for the structure or whatever. whatever. That guy charges, let's say, 1.6x the value. Why do you charge so much? I use only primary steel. I only use this kind of a brick. I only use this kind of a concrete uh, from this sort of a brand. And then I provide test certificates for all the materials to my client. And I say, okay, this is what I've used in your building. This is the curing time. I don't go to the above slab after till a curation time is reached. There is everything in place. And I use these kind of chemicals and these are as per BIS. So wo sab kuch specification ke se karte hai. that's why he's charging 1.6x. Now people who understand quality or who have the budget to actually hire him. Hire him. <coughs> but the crude fact is only people who have the budget go for him. Mm -hmm. They can pay higher. That's why they're doing it. They might not understand quality themselves. But I've always noticed that a better quality comes with a 
little bit of a better price. Like you said, you know, L2, mm -hmm. but T1, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we can also add another term to it, Q1, right? Quality. Uh, it can be quality as well. So it can be L2, but it has to be quality number one. Yeah. Here, uh, many people don't understand uh, the effect to quote uh, quality from Juran, who said quality is free. Mm -hmm. So people think higher the quality, higher is the price. No, it's the wrong no, concept, no. actually. So uh, you save for the time being, but you pay for it in 2x greater. Absolutely. So like steel, as you were telling, primary market, secondary market. Steel, if it uh, uh, matches with a particular IS specification, it should be. Yeah, yeah. But then the chemical things don't match. So for the time being, you'll save money and you say that. But on a wrong run, you lose much more. Absolutely. Than that. So you, want, you want to talk to them about what the findings, the 30% drop in price and also when the number of snags came down, you may want to give that. Yeah. So we were working for, uh, thanks for free, yeah. we were working for uh, a builder at the time, so we were pointing out. So when we started the project, there were more than about, uh, on an average, about 260 or 270 snags per apartment. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, as we started, they were totally flabbergasted. So how can that be so much? So they were, uh, they were you know, reputed builders and they uh, procured all the best material. But the problem was with the subcontractors. They were not doing the right job. The materials were good, but the installations were bad. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the workmanship was bad. So they were uh, ending into a lot of problems. So then uh, there's one more uh, theory we have. Funny, like uh, when you're doing multi-story uh, building, as you go up, the number of snacks go up. Okay. Do you know why? Can you guess why? No, I don't know. I don't know this theory. <laughs> okay. The lower, uh, lower slabs will have less snacks. Upper floors will have more. Your budget, Your budget evaporates. evaporates. Is that is that no. No. No, 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 no. It's a good theory, but no. Yeah, I mean, eventually you end up losing. So you don't, so have, you don't more have more money, money as you go, as you go right? right? Less well, money. Most in the construction industry, you probably cost. Mm. And the building is being constructed. The initial state cannot can stop the dips. Mm. They have to climb up and go. Oh, the right. supervising engineer will never climb up so many floors. Once he goes, that day is out. So you just tell him, instruct something and come down and never go up again. Mm -hmm. So whatever he does is uh, seen only in the next okay, day. Okay. The quality goes up because of less, lack of substitution. Yeah. The, they can't change it now. But. The, so, so one of the, in a day, how many times you can climb? Yeah. Yeah. So the, one of the things that we've done then is, if you're on a project yeah. that is there, you move your project office to the last floor. That makes sense. That's a very basic rule. Yeah. Huh? That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Yeah have to happen, has yes. to be done, exactly. <laughs> rather than saying follow this, yes. do this, no, 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 make it happen in a way that this must be done, if you have to sit somewhere, that's your place, so that's a, that's a, actually that's not a bad insight, <laughs> makes sense, that's probably a big cause of uh, a very, you know, a lot of problems uh, arising in quality as well. It looks uh, different, but uh, there are the things to improve quality, absolutely, absolutely. and uh, well, I in that particular project, we started about 260 snags were coming. Then they were totally out. Then they said to just, uh, we told them, so we are wasting our time. So we are also wasting our time. They your list. Yeah. Yeah. So we gave them a list of common snags. We told them, 15 days, you just take your time. Yeah. Yeah. Clear all this, then call us. Then suddenly the things dropped down to 120 yeah. in that range. So they knew that somebody is going to come and check. So they started keeping things ready. And one more funny thing is, as we continued, the snacks came down drastically. And the management was surprised. So they knew that there is somebody who is going to check them. So why not give him an opportunity? Why give him an opportunity? Let's correct yeah. them. You know, be caught. So they themselves got alerted. And then the snack level came down. This is a, a spillover effect we call it. Like I always keep jokingly telling, so there is a traffic signal. If uh, there is a signal that comes like people just do this side, that side, and go on. And if there is a cop standing there, they will all stop. Mm. So the signal is there, it will not take care of the whole thing. There is a system in place. But for that to work, somebody has to check. So we do that. Exactly like what we used to happen in school with us, right? <laughs> uh, there were weekly tests. Huh. There were unit tests. And then there were finals. Unit test numbers, marks would contribute to the finals. Exactly. So we would be serious about the unit test. We would never be serious we'll about the weekly, weekly test. test. Exactly. So we don't care about that, right? Huh. Now the unit test is there, we'll study for two days. Huh. And for the final exam, we'll study for a week. Exactly. So that's the whole thing. So if you know that you're going to be marked on something later on, 
you'll probably be a little more serious about it, right? So in that clause, we proved statistically yeah. that odd money is spent on instruction. Mm -hmm. It's paid multiple times because the simple thing like they're tightening the tap, you know, very yeah. really costly I think grow ahead make it was. They were over tightening and there was a crack in that and that leads to latest and that is so many things. It's a simple thing like using a talk uh, talk range. And those things, you know, they serve a lot of money. See, they, so the problem the... is people don't want to invest in the appropriate tools or educate each person who is there. If you have a torque wrench, it won't allow you to tighten it beyond a certain level. Yeah. So you won't crack an expensive piece of fitting. Exactly. So if that is done... Such a basic thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people say, Abhi, kyu, kyu dena hai paisa? Agar aap abhi paisa na dho, sorry, my Hindi, my South Indian Hindi. It's fine. But if you don't do it, then tomorrow, you're going to happen worse problems. Yeah. The worst thing for a builder to happen is somebody buys something, goes on social media and bad mouths you. It is there permanently. Yeah. You cannot do anything because anybody who searches will find it. The only thing that you can do is make sure it doesn't even come there by giving a good quality at yeah. the end of the day. I, whenever I meet professionals, I tell them we have to become immensely amazing professionals so that people respect professionals. Exactly. We don't res respect professionalism in India. We have to become amazing professionals for them to respect us. Mm -hmm. Whenever I talk to a business owner, I tell them quality is something that will live with us forever. Yes. If I deliver something time and again with quality, I don't have to do anything else. Exactly. I don't have to do any other marketing because people because people will do word the marketing mouth, for me. Word of mouth. And exactly. that is a stronger bond of marketing. They say, okay, you know what? Go with Rishan. You know what? Go with Nehmadi. Go with Uday. You know, he, he knows what he's talking about. Not just that, he's delivered. I've experienced the services. Word of mouth is probably the strongest way to market because someone else is selling you, selling exactly. your service to the other guy. Exactly. And you don't have to talk about yourself anymore. Uh, I So now we've talked about the demographics a little bit. I, I just had one Please. point. You asked, why do people not even get attention or invest in quality? Yeah. I want to quote what uh, Bacha the, the the shoe manufacturing is actually a Czech company. I don't know if you know this. Bacha said, I am not rich enough. Mm. I repeat, I am not rich enough to buy inexpensive shoes. Mm. If you think about it, what he's trying to say is, I don't want to repeatedly buy something exactly. for 50 rupees. Yeah. So if, if I buy something for 500 rupees and it lasts me 10 years, rather than buy something for 25 rupees every year, three times. Absolutely. And the pain of buying again and again, and exactly. then disposing what you already own. Exactly. Uh, in the context of buildings and apartments and real estate, mm -hmm. it's a very big undertaking that you're taking. And then to sell it off later on, knowing that this has a problem, also it's, weighs yes. on your conscience. Not yes. just that, it's not it's not easy to sell. No, nobody will buy. And now people are educated. Yeah? Yes, people especially in an questions. apartment complex, which has a name of being... Ridden with problems later yeah. on, let's say five years down the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, society mein pani ka bada problem. Yeah, seepage ka bada problem. Structures are weak there. Are nahi, yaar, I've seen plaster chipping off. You know, I see there's a lot of lack of parking there. Basic issues, people talk. Yes. And people really. get to know. Yes. And eventually, if you own a property there, yeah, I don't gone. think you can offload that property later on at a good price in any case. So what you've invested goes down. Yes. Doesn't really make you a lot of money as it was supposed to. If somebody something has to grow 3x, probably goes down by like 50% and just gives you 1x or 2x a return on that after 10 years, 20 years. That's, That's, That's not something you want, right? No. Guys, let's share some fun stories uh, from Perfect. some of the home inspection experiences that you guys have had. So we had a case where a particular homeowner came and said, look, it's a brand new property, mm -hmm. hardly a year. And we wanted to check this. So we said we wanted to drill a hole because we wanted to hang a photograph. Yeah. So they drilled a hole and the water started coming out like, like a stream. So then they were scared. So they plugged it and then they called us. Yeah. They said, what is happening? Yeah. It's a new bloody place. Yeah. You know, why is it? So we said, let us find out. So we went and said, okay, let us drill a hole at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Drill a hole at the bottom. One bucket, two buckets, three buckets, four buckets. Kept going. Almost five to eight buckets we got. So we got a lot of buckets. We were like, what the hell? Where is the water coming? What is this? So we said, okay, fine. Let the water first come out. We'll investigate. So Suresh, myself, I think uh, we had uh, Divya and Roy was also there, I'm not sure. We started going around the place. I mean, 
we said first of all let us see what type of a building material was used yeah okay what is it? They, they were using something called a porotherm block okay porotherm block is made of terracotta kind of a material which when you clump them together forms a channel now what has happened is these channels are formed but it is not filled then we said okay where could we we went looked around and we finally found a shaft mm. which is covered on top so we said please remove the cover we want to peer into it so when we peered into it it is not plastered mm. so now you have a shaft which is built in a way that nobody can go inside to plaster it yeah so these guys have not plastered it so what they've done is they've to prevent anything from going in they've put four masts and covered it covered on top it. yeah but nature water if it rains monsoon it will go in once it goes in water is going to trickle down the wall surface so when it trickles on the wall surface it's going to enter a crack yeah if it enters a crack it's going to go into that all the time because it's the shortest path water finds yeah. it starts going in and then you have channels when you have channels it's going to keep filling in it fills in and it goes to that particular place mm. which is not immediately next to it is maybe a house later so water has gone in through this channel yeah. for that whole monsoon and has filled up in those channels yeah and now you drill a hole it just it just fills up, up buckets inside yeah. the house <laughs> but the funny part is wow everybody thought it was something to do with plumbing lines yeah i mean that that's the first thought that you get right yeah. that you basically ruptured a plumbing line yes and eventually there's no plumbing no, line there, there. No, because it was a wall for a, a, a living room yeah there's no plumbing lines there wow <laughs> that's more than half a day to investigate that's that's Finally, unique that is a unique challenge right there yes so this is what we say is not based on just something that we do our experience in the field absolutely and our experience having worked with so many people gives us the insight to say what to check yeah and how to check right that is what we say you want to talk about the fountain on the fifth floor yeah before that time like to tell the when was the um, uh, talk to people who come to us they ask then they come to a conclusion that i am buying a uh, building from one of the best yeah. builders do a steel acquirer inspection so many times we do convince them when they require and they take our service and the funny thing i uh, remember that bathroom mm-hmm. uh, thing so there the, uh, the inspection was going on the engineer called yeah. said i got a peculiar problem here when i open the tap in the wash basin suddenly i get he got drenched because the shower came on <laughs> <laughs> That's great so the uh, client is totally taken by surprise yeah. so you don't notice it so uh-huh. that when we point out even the builder didn't believe it yeah. all his plumbers came and they said yes it was coming so they had done some mistake in the plumbing yeah so uh, then they had to strip off the whole one of the oh, tiles wow. and then rectify that yeah. and you don't believe sometimes even in bathrooms when they open the shower you get uh, water seeping out near the wash basin there is about uh, uh, other three walls away it passes to back side of the uh, tiling and then comes out between the joint in the tile yeah so these are some of the funny things uh, we come across yeah so the people don't do the testing only yeah, they don't charge the pipes initially they don't check it they don't, they don't. it's just but this is amazing wash basin on <laughs> <laughs> this is great i think that would have been a great shock to the gentleman yes, yes, yes. like what is happening yeah. wow and uh, talked about the uh, fountain yes so uh, we have a peculiar case where they called us yeah. for uh, uh, seepage issue in one of the staircases okay. so this was coming in say first floor it. it was the first floor staircase in the staircase side one we used to get the dampness the bottom part bottom part so, yeah, the, so yeah. we call that as a breast part for the uh, stays over the stem of the here so in the breast wall the what was we got we checked over there so it was totally uh, uh, very uh, uh, very difficult to find out yeah and usually and those areas are water free zones yeah, because you don't expect what to do five times no the fact i think then finally we went on and on the third floor there was a, a fountain in that soft top uh, penthouse there was a fountain so then our engineers that a lot of investigation then we said that was be the only thing which is coming out so when we told the builder that where the pot is coming from he didn't believe us then we have to do a uh, dye test man yeah we added a dye in the uh, in the water the pool water there yeah, yeah, yeah. and then after something the dye appeared here oh. 
Ah, that's such a simple solution. Yeah. But that's the thing great. is, what the builder kept saying is that, no, no, we've put this properly. But what they don't realize is when they're installing the fountain, the waterproofing may have been destroyed. Yeah. And water takes its shortest path, not our it shortest will. path. So it will go down anywhere and come out where it wants yeah. to come out. And yeah. it's it's persistent. Water's yeah. nature is very persistent. Exactly. If it finds a path, it wherever, is. it'll try to go in and seep in. You have to create a very strong barrier for the water to stay like that. Otherwise, swimming pools and all these things, they'll, they'll be draining water exactly. uh, every day. And nowadays, people like to create swimming pools on the terraces and in the basements yes. and wherever. Uh, this is interesting. And the approach was good. Uh, so it showed the color, right? Huh? Yeah, it just have yeah. drops of that color that comes out. Yeah, and that was and brilliant and a very, very basic solu uh, solution to find the problem, right? Uh, great diagnostics, by the way. Uh, I want to uh, ask you a direct question now, right? Do you think developers in India and with, the, with the, a lot of them that you've uh, worked on their apartments and you've checked their apartments and their villas, do you think developers now in our country are at par with the world class or the global levels? So I think we need and to... And I'm going to be a little biased here. I recently came from Dubai, Dubai and yeah, Abu Dhabi and all yeah. these places. I'm sorry I, I disturbed you in your vacation, but... Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> it was... Uh, uh, every time I go there, so it's probably my sixth or seventh visit there, every time I go there, I see something miraculous happening there. And I, when I say miraculous, they'll complete a huge project in like two years. Mm -hmm. And it's not a regular project. Anything, every building you see, you want, like you want to click a picture of it and you want to save them, you know, for yourselves. Do you think we're nearing that gap now in our Indian developers? Do you think our developers are reaching that level of quality or vision or workmanship? So I think the question is well framed that we need to also understand the breadth of what construction is. Yeah. If, if somebody was to look at the way that most homes in the US are constructed, it is very different to how a home is constructed in India. Yeah. In America, they use two by four wooden beams to construct stuff. And then they have POP walls and then it is filled with some sort of a material for the in between the two walls. Yeah. That is a very different way of constructing. Yeah. Then if you go to Europe, they also have a very different way, but it's relatively more, uh, what shall I say, more similar to the way Indian homes are built. Yeah. Middle East and India is quite similar. They, mm. they use a lot more steel structures, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, the, yeah. the high-rise buildings. Absolutely, yeah. To flatly answer your question, it is dependent on a couple of things. One is the actual interest to do something that stands out. Yeah. Two is the money, the investment capacity. And three is the drive of that particular locality. Mm. Right. If there is somebody who says, "Look, I want to build this," there is a lot of there are a lot of agencies that need to bring in saying that, "Okay, I will make availability of such and such material. I will have water. I will have X, Y, and Z to allow you to build something of that nature." Yeah. In China, the government says it needs to be done. It gets done. I mean, it's not a democracy where, Absolutely. like in yeah. India, people will say, "No, you can't build something here because it is my place." Right in China, hoga to they will. You know, yeah, it's a singular some, push, yes, basically, and then it gets done. Yeah. In the Middle East, there is a lot of money that allows you to do it. Yeah. In India, India is a very complex ecosystem, complex democracy. Not that we are not doing it; we are doing it, but we are there slow and steady. Mm. If you look at a lot of the buildings that are built, villas that are built. Yeah. In Bangalore, at least because that's what we are exposed to. Yeah. I would say that. They are of really good quality. Villas, I agree with you. Yeah. But Even in Delhi. Yes. They are world class. World class. Yeah. Right? So it is only a little bit of time till we come to a commercial structure. Yeah. Which is of world class. Yeah. We need to also understand the, the demographic of people who have access to it is not the same as in the Middle East. In Dubai, the buying power... The purchasing power parity is vastly different from India. But I mean, I'm, I mean that's arguable. But uh, because eighty percent of them are immigrants in any case, right? So what what you're looking at is investors from abroad, people like you, you and build, I are you going can, there. And, you're trying to go in the direction of build it and they'll come. It will yeah. happen, but will it sustain? Now we have a mall in Bangalore that came up. Okay. Biggest mall in Asia. Uh, mall of Asia. It's huge. Yeah. 
it, there was such a rush on the on day one that there was a traffic jam for 10 kilometers yeah but why did people go there not to buy just to see just to see what it is exactly yeah. now there was something that my dad talked about is when when malls are built abroad foot footfall is measured to see how much revenue somebody will make yeah that cannot be done in india because people will go to a mall not to buy but to go to a mall to enjoy the air conditioning i know what you mean to go on a date to go take selfies and come out yeah but and that's it so pe- it people spend not... money on a date uh, <laughs> but not everybody you don't that footfall is for conversion of say maybe a fashion store or okay. bookstore right yeah that conversion doesn't happen so there is some amount of information that needs to also go into it but to answer your question in short we are there in the next maybe few years we will be there because i think you kind of answered my follow up uh, i wanted to link it to so i understand that things can be done only in two ways when it comes to a project <clears throat> a construction project is not a small undertaking it's a huge under- undertaking yes. uh, i see it as two things that can make it possible and again maybe i've just come in from the middle east maybe that's that's why i'm thinking like this it's only either the vision uh backed by the money for me that if you have the vision and you have the money i think you'll do it um when i meant what i meant actually by being world class and reaching there is when i saw the structures of these buildings buildings that were under construction the structures are not simple mm-hmm. uh each structure each slab is shaped differently because the outlook of the building is going to be shaped differently it's paired differently uh each slab overlaps each other in a different aspect based on various structures i saw this one structure where there were two towers and right in the middle of it there was a vertic- uh, there was a horizontal bridge. structure mm-hmm. it was not a bridge it was a box which was inserted between the two towers and mm-hmm. just connected to this one and this oh, one lovely uh-huh. and it was like about 100 feet there and 100 feet there mm-hmm. so and cantilever talk- beam huge one just talk about cantilever it's all in the air mm-hmm. now when you look at that structure the audacity to build something like that uh sometimes i think our even our code is a little restrictive uh to build an undertaking like that but they they build whatever they can imagine that's that's what i've seen there the dubai frame mm-hmm. uh if you actually look at uh, mm-hmm. the dubai frame now if i talk to somebody who's been experiencing structural engineering who's been doing structural engineering for 20, 40 years they'll they'll tell me ki you know delhi is in seismic zone 4 uh if you design something like that and if the two towers you know vibrate in a different way then the structure in the middle crack. connecting to that might crack mm-hmm. so it might lead to some sort of a hazard right but of course those challenges lie there in dubai as well but they're able to build a world class structure and they're invite so by the way i don't know if you read this like two days back the dubai mall was rated as the most visited place mm-hmm. in the world in 2023 with 5 billion people visiting it last year it's crazy I, right so like you said build it and then invite but our do we have that vision or that money in place yeah uh well, coming to a question like uh, we do have that vision uh we do uh experience like our parent company yeah uh and prakash comes to my point for against you know we are the offshoot of that mm-hmm. so we are building a lot for jst param it's called in mangalore so it's a big auditorium with a Uh, with a peculiar shape you would have hyperbolic a, parabola hyperbolic parabola groups like a shell of ice tortoise yeah and it goes up to 50 meters in one side and then comes down to 40 meters on the other side it's a very peculiar shape structure nice and can you uh, just imagine what is the roof thickness of that right i'm i can't even begin to think there so go for 75 feet yes 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 printers that's it you know the advantage mm-hmm. of all these good <laughs> yes. printers wow. and i walked on that and do <laughs> imagine the thickness of this paper it is stable amazing stable they are printing that right. and in one particular room it's only 100 mm thick with of course all the thick the, there are design capabilities there are people who are executing and on designers from india and the contractors from india and we are the project plan community from india yeah yes yes from india and yeah But so think yeah it is there but sorry just to the shape is like a saddle a horse saddle no sir yeah all right which fear uh i'm i'm sorry for going off topic but this is something close to my heart uh, the reason i i i keep bring, bringing this up is uh i'm getting a view of the construction industry in india in a very very different way 
and I get to meet different variety of people with different mindsets. Um, we recently spoke to a gentleman who uh, passed out from IIT when it was not IIT Roorkee, when it was just called Roorkee in 1958. He's an 86-year-old gentleman, uh, worked in the civil engineering uh, department, various departments in our country. He's also started a couple of organizations, uh, which were government organizations in India. And he was somebody who started working on something called ferro cement. And he showed me how a gas chamber was created. It was only 50 mm thick. And there was a lot of pressure of that gas within that chamber and they sustained it. And the uh, project was funded by uh, UNICEF. And it's cheap. It's cheap, but it's still not being used. And this is when, this is what he created back in 1980s mm -hmm. and still not being employed anywhere else. We have systems and tech in place, but I, I think the, the environment has so far not been conducive enough to actually help the construction industry grow like that in our in our country. Uh, we have been killing dreams in a way, and I'm sorry to say this, uh, but I, I think there is that incubation with the current setup and the current arrangement that we have, especially with the advent of the road uh, network and what not happening right now. I do see a good, bright future, but I think this was something that I wanted to discuss with you guys because you've worked cross-country. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. We have a lot today. more to talk to. Maybe we'll do a session too. We can we'll have to do it. I, I don't think this topic <laughs> is uh, enough covered in one episode, right? Definitely. Uh, thank you for flying in on a Sunday morning from thank Bangalore. You. Thank you for having us. Especially for doing this. No, it was, it was a pleasure. Uh, this was uh, uh, my friend Uday Asima Prakash and Mr. Suresh from Nemadi. If you have any questions for them, write to me at buildmadepodcast at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at buildmadepodcast. Uh, we also have a LinkedIn and 